Despite attempts to remain neutral during the U.S. Civil War, the Cherokee Nation found itself drawn into the neighboring conflict and deeply divided. In this Cherokee Almanac, we learned that nowhere was this more evident than at the Battle of Pea Ridge. In the American Civil War, states fought over certain rights and ideologies. Neighboring Indian tribes, including the Cherokee Nation, were sometimes drawn into the conflict in spite of being sovereign nations apart from the Union. One of the main reasons that the Cherokee Nation became involved in the Civil War is that their economy is tied to other states around it. Slowly, everyone around Cherokee Nation is starting to uh, go the way of the Confederacy. Although Cherokee Nation's principal chief, John Ross, takes a strong stand for neutrality, his strategy is undermined by the withdrawal of federal troops from Indian Territory and the rekindling of old feuds within the tribe. The war was going to come to Indian Territory whether they wanted it or not. There was a lot of infighting amongst the Cherokees. Uh, there were pro-Union Cherokees and there were pro-Confederate Cherokees as well. By the late 1861, uh, it was becoming obvious that these they were going to have to choose a side. With great reluctance, Chief Ross signs an agreement with the Confederacy. In late 1861, two Cherokee Confederate regiments formed under Stand Wadey and John Drew. Despite having a common Cherokee background, the two regiments were not closely aligned. The two regiments of the Cherokees, you know, that, that were formed up really were kind of down the, the, the lines of political affiliation, as that a lot of the men that were in Drew's regiment had been opposed to the removal back in the 1830s, and a lot of the men that were within the Wadey Regiment were pro-removal. That old divide and that old flame is still there. John Drew's faction, um, they, they principally saw their role as almost a bodyguard for, for uh, John Ross. They were lukewarm Confederates at best. They were uh, anti-slavery. Uh, most of these soldiers were traditionalists and Cherokees. And most of Wadey's uh, supporters, they had plantations, they owned slaves. They just had more in common with the Southern way of life. Both regiments were organized under Confederate General Albert Pike and his commander, Earl Van Dorn. The Cherokee Nation's agreement with the Confederacy stipulated its Indian troops would not fight outside of Indian territory, but the growing need to secure Missouri for the South caused both regiments to be ordered into Arkansas in early March of 1862. Pike, along with a, a group of, of Texans with the two Cherokee regiments, continued through a, a, through a massive cold front and snowstorm on their way over to, uh, uh, to join forces with uh, um, General Van Dorn's army in Northwest Arkansas. They came through here and, and joined Van Dorn's army. Most of the troops were poorly clothed, poorly equipped, and of course the food uh, was also inadequate as well. As they're told to, to, to pack very lightly, uh, because they're going to be moving very fast. Oh, they have very little food, they have very little protection away from the cold. Supplies were left behind them in Bentonville as they marched 10 miles to Pea Ridge to make their stand. Weather conditions made fast travel impossible. Pike's troops arrived late on March 6th, exhausted and hungry, not realizing Union troops were less than two miles from their encampment. Fighting began the next day with the Confederates outnumbering the Union by more than 5,000 troops. The battle starts on March 7th, two separate engagements separated by about three and a half miles. Now on the other side of the battlefield, uh, the western side of the battlefield at, at Lee Town, and that's where the, the Cherokee regiments actually participated in, you essentially have outnumbered Federals there as well. What happened next forever cast a shadow on the reputation of Pike's Indian troops. The two Cherokee units and a, a group of Texans attacked a, a federal battery and, and took it over. Once the battery was recaptured by the Federals, there were um, reports of some of the men had been scalped. Federal soldiers noticed that there were um, at least eight soldiers from the 3rd Iowa Cavalry that were scalped and that there were several other uh, bodies that had been mutilated. It looked like they'd been cut with knives or, or tomahawks. The incident caused a furor among the federal ranks with fingers pointed from all sides. Stan Wadey's men blamed John Drew's regiment. John Drew's regiment blamed Stan Wadey's regiment. 
uh, we don't really know exactly who did the scalping. And it kind of put a distrust uh, from both sides uh, to Native American troops from that point on. Union reinforcements arrived overnight and a pitched battle began at dawn the next morning. The worn out Confederate troops were now outnumbered and outgunned. Although they fought determinedly, they were soon overcome. The Union victory at Pea Ridge effectively stopped Missouri from joining the Confederacy. Drew's men returned to the Cherokee Nation in defeat and frustration, while Wadey's men regrouped and moved on to fight other battles. Drew's regiment is, is starting a slow erosion of, of desertion at this point. By the time the middle to the end of the year, Drew's gonna lose most of his regiment. And so you've got a lot of John Drew's men desert and leave the uh, the first Cherokee Mounted Rifles, and they joined what would become the second and third Kansas Indian Home Guard. And um, I believe it's over 600 of his men actually joined those two Indian Home Guard units. Although Cherokee soldiers on both sides comprised only a small percentage of the overall troops who fought in the U.S. Civil War, they played a key role in pivotal battles such as Pea Ridge. <laughs> 